In this episode, we will be trying out different techniques of managing font loading performance. Yes! If you've ever seen that flash of unstyled text, the foot, or if you've seen the flash of invisible text, the foit, and you're really sick and tired of it, this is that episode you need to watch. I'm David, and this is a weekly web development show where we experiment, uh, mostly fail, but always learn at least something. You're watching Dev Tips. This episode is sponsored by .tech domains. Thank you .tech. If you've ever started a new project or had a startup, most difficult part is finding an available name. But there are plenty of good ones on .tech. Tech is fantastic in telling the world what you're really about in a short and stylish way. And even the likes of CES, Intel, Viacom are on .tech domains. Check them out, use go.tech slash devtips to show them that you came from here. That link is in the episode description. Thank you .tech and now let's get back to the show. If you just want to skip everything because you don't care about this and just see the results from my experiments, go to the timestamp I've added in the edit right below. But then you're boring. So what is font loading? Well, font loading is basically in your CSS, you're adding a font face and referencing some other resource that has the font. You don't want to rely on the native fonts like the sans serif or that someone has Ta Times New Roman or Helvetica. You want to download your font and that's why we have web fonts. And since web fonts came, we managed to like style and build great designs and that's all good. But for performance, we sometimes get the flash of unstyled text that it first shows one style and then after the fonts loaded, bam, the actual font comes. Or it also can be that we have like just loading things, things get populated and we get the foit, the flash of invisible text that we first see invisible text that then get populated once the uh, web font loads. And we're gonna look into that. Why do we care about this? Just as in the previous video where we did critical CSS, when the user drops or lands on our page, if they come for the first time, uh, each second, each hundred millisecond, each millisecond is very, very precious because they are on a cellular device often. They have slow bandwidth. They have low bandwidth, slow connection. And if it takes too long, uh, that sucks for them. And with the fonts, often the actual page might load pretty fast, but when everything is just bouncing around, that's a big pain. So watch the critical CSS video and here we will deal with some other web performance aspect. So this is my small example. We have a header and we have some text. And in the next paragraph, we have text that also has a strong text. So here we have two fonts. We have this font, IBM Plex Sans is from Google Web Fonts, font weight 400, font style normal. And then we have strong here, it's 700 weighted. And that is the same as the H1, the font weight is 700. So these are two fonts. And then we have an image just to add some things to like simulate that we have an actual page which has some stuff loading and we can just see that the image, oops, uh, the image is 106 kilobytes. But here, check out this, these are the fonts. They are 12, 12, 15 kilobytes ish because we have a third font which is uh, this one, the block quote here. It is IBM Plex Serif and it is, I don't know why it doesn't say that, it's, it's in italic, it's in italic. Font style, italic, doesn't matter. So what happens here is, so if we simulate that we're on a slow connection, and we've removed the cache, so we have to load everything again. And then we refresh, do, do, do some fetching, boom. Now it's a flash of invisible text and boom, that's where the text dropped. 
Sometimes you get the flash of unstyled text and we'll see that later on. Let's just redo this. Load. Waiting, waiting. It gets the first font, it gets the image, starts loading. It's just a poor experience to have to wait for this. And let's see what happens if we scroll down. We're pretty eager. We reload. Nothing's happening. Reload. Oh, I don't know if you saw that, that the lorem ipsum came slightly, slightly, slightly after uh, this other text. A few examples. I'm heavily, 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 heavily inspired by Zach Leatherman. Uh, if you find this remotely interesting, you should go check out both his, the font loading checklist, which I'm sort of following here. It has like the basics that you need to do to get web fonts working. But he's also did, he did this one speech that was, ah, uh, this video. This video is amazing. You should really check it out. I know it's 45 minutes, but he did some extensive testing with this. When you see these videos, it's like, oh yeah, this is great. But uh, I, I want to learn it myself. I need to try it out myself to learn it. And that's what I did. So we made this simple, 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 simple page with some data to simulate that things are being loaded and all that stuff. It is served from my local HTTP server here. No special caching, no, no magic, it's just basics, but it's just a very, very simple page. So we have just a title and then we have some style. This is just normalize.css to fix everything with margins and stuff. And then we have the basic link href with the fonts. Because if you go to Google fonts and check out the fonts and select a few fonts that you like, click, 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 click. I've done that already here. And then how do you do it to embed it? You just drop in the link href and then you specify in the CSS how to use it. It's super easy. I love this, it's easy. But we'll see that it's not the most performant way. You can make this quicker by not doing it this way. So in this original file, I have the normalized CSS here. Let's just collapse that. I dropped in the link href from the Google web fonts. And then I style it. I, had, I have a body tag with the font family. I have a font default font weight, default font style. H1, I'm overriding that with font weight 700. So you can see there that I'm loading the IBM Plex Sans 400 and that's the default normal and then the font weight 700 and for the serif font I'm downloading the 400 the normal weight in italics. So already I'm not downloading all the families and all the weights I'm just selecting what I need. And then we have the block quote this is a serif one so it's falling back to like the default font and it's 200 the size, but I know that it's italicized, so perhaps I should just do font, style, italic. Everything looks fine. Inspect it. It's italic, it works. And then I have some margin on my lorem, lorem. And then I have just the wrapper with the padding bottom trick that you saw in the uh, teaching a coder CSS video. You should check that out as well. So that is basically just to uh, keep, keep things from jumping around. And then we have the HTML. So it's just a header, P, P with the strong, the wrapper with the image, some P, and then just some stuff here. And then a block quote, which has a different font. So what are different ways of dealing with this? One way is to use the web font loader that Google and Typekit, a font foundry, took a font marketplace, developed. So that works this way that you just drop in their web font JS and then you just load and which is the provider we're using Google but you can do Typekit or other providers and then which families and you see that I have the same families here and then everything looks just the same. I'm doing everything the same way. So 
How does that run? What's going on? Let's refresh that. What's going on here? Boom, that's the flash of unstyled text. First, it renders the text without the actual font. So it's going back to the sans serif. And down below, it falls back to the serif. So it's actually doing, before it, it hasn't gotten these. So it just renders this one and this one, the, the default font. Let's look at that again. And we're gonna take a look at the lorem ipsum down below here. So we refresh. And wait. Lorem ipsum. Everything is flashing. And then it's re-rendered. So this is not a good experience. So I'm pretty sure that this will get a pretty good... Let's try it in the audit tab. Let's see. What does Lighthouse think of the performance here? Pretty good. It's okay. I think that's sort of the same as the original. But wait, what's going on here? It's loading now again. So this first meaningful paint, it's actually loading the meaningful paint, which is the, the, the incorrect style. I don't want that. I want it to load this paint. So we can't really trust these metrics here. And there's another way of calling the web font loader. So here's the web font loader, and here you see the different modules, typekit, fonts.com, fonttech, all that stuff. And this is the synchronous way of loading it, like it has to go through all this. But for me it's like, hmm, what's going on here? We might as well just load it asynchronously because we're still getting that flash of unstyled text. So we could load it this way. So I have another example. So here we're loading it asynchronously. First we set up the config with the Google and the families, and then we load the script with the web font JS. We could of course include this straight up in the HTML if this is very important, which it probably is, but I let's just use this. And then everything is just the same. So let's try that. Go to the network and still we have slow 3G, we have disabled cache. Let's just run this and see what happens. Up, 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 up. I want to see this in the iPhone 5 because that's what we did before. Okay, now let's run this. Okay, it's unstyled. Things are flashing. Okay, that was sort of the same experience. Let's look at the lorem ipsum down below here. This is the same experience there as well. Loading, unstyled, using the defaults, it flashes big again, and then it's there. Okay, let's see what the audit tab says. Let's run this now. I don't I don't trust this because one and a half second if you just see this normally when I hit enter here and I would count to one and a half seconds one and a half so I think that one and a half is when it's rendered something with the unstyled text and then it's just like redrawing everything this is not good I don't like this redraw. What happens here is that we load these configs and then this script pulls the web fonts. But where do they come from? We load the HTML, we load the web fonts JS, and then it fetches the, the families that we had in the link rel before, remember? This is what we had in the link rel. So actually the link rel in the old way started loading faster. So it started loading around here. Start at 4.42 seconds. 4.42 seconds. So if we go to the original. We just added the link rel. It actually starts loading the fonts. And fetching them at like way earlier. Because in the original, the link href is loaded here, whereas in the async and the sync, it starts fetching first the web font JS, and then it starts fetching the, 
the fonts. My other idea is why don't we self-host the fonts? And this is something I remembered from Zach's talk. So my experiments here is a mashup of his talk. This talk, he's talking about hosting them yourself. And there are many tricks where you can host them by yourself and you can have them on subdomains and stuff to improve performance, but we will just keep them on the server. We don't have that many fonts. So yet another experiment, self-hosted. So what I did here is I downloaded the fonts and here I get all the fonts, but that doesn't matter because we're only interested in the ones we need. And then I followed one of the stack's advice. These are TTF files, true types. So here in our original, we're actually loading WAF2 files. 12 kilobytes, 12 kilobytes, less than 150 kilobytes. So we have to, we should use the formats that are available to us that have a smaller file size. And these WAF2 files are smaller. So I woffied, woffied the files. So I basically just went to, uh, this is the resource I used, IBM Plex. So the sans serif, I chose Latin and I chose my weights, regular and 700. And then it generates the font phase for me. So basically it has fallbacks to different browsers. And I just took this, downloaded things, and then modified my prefix. So I added an assets category and then I put them in the WAFID directory. And then I just put the files here. So all I did here was I added these font face things that were generated for me and then all the code below is the same. And of course I downloaded the fonts. So this is the self-hosted version. Now the fonts are on my server. They don't have to go to font.gstatic.com. It's my server. So let's try that. Let's try that. Paste there. Boom. Start loading. Ha! Huh. At least this felt faster, right? Let's reload. So we get flash of unstyled text first, but then it gets modified pretty quickly to the, the font. Let's see how it looks down below here at the lorem ipsum. Scroll down here, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Yeah, it's pretty fast. This feels much, much, much better. I like this. So we have the woof2 files. Huh, my woof2 files are slightly larger. I think perhaps they're not compressed or something like that. They're not, I don't have anything on my HTTP server. This is my server running here, blah, 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 blah. But then I read on Zach's page, start important font downloads earlier. So what's happening here is that you can use the preload. So we self-host them with preloading. So the way I understand the browser, I'm not expert at this. I'm just trying to learn. If you know things about this that I'm missing, please write that in the comments. On the last few episodes, the comments have been really, really good. So I like it that the comments become sort of a resource. So I try things out, it fails, I learn something, but then people on the internet have learned a lot of things and just write it in the comments. That's really good. I encourage you to write in the comments and read the comments. So especially if you're watching this like a week from now, I think the comments are better than the video. So the way I understand the browser, is that it comes here, oh, it makes note, read font face, doesn't care about that. Read font face, doesn't care about this. Read font face. It doesn't start to load these assets. It just like makes a mental note which assets to use. And it specifies different formats, which format to use. 
And then it comes here, body, boom, IBM Plex Sans. So now we understand that, okay, the first thing to do is that when I get here to the HTML where the body is, I need the IBM Plex Sans. So it goes up to the IBM Plex Sans that has the normal 400 weight and then shoes is the one to load and uh, it's the WAF2. So, by adding link preload here, we can tell the browser that when it comes here, ah, I will need this asset. So let's just start loading it now, instantly. And then I have another asset, which is the, the 700 weighted. The, the, the stronger one, the bolded one. Load that one. But I did not include the serif one, because you remember the serif comes down here. So I don't really care, because I just want to think about this, the critical CSS part. What happens here? So these are allowed to preload, but then the italic part, it comes down here. Mm, you can load that once you get there. It doesn't, I don't care. But try to preload these. In this example though, it's a very basic example. So it says preload here. And then we have this, this, this part. 2.6, 2,600 characters. So it doesn't really matter because it will end up and needing this pretty fast. But if you have an actual site that has a huge head uh, block here, it has a lot of things in head and has many things that, going, that goes on before it starts to render, then I think this preload will have a big effect. But I don't think in this, I don't think it will have that big of an effect here. But I like the idea of thinking of preloading. But we don't want to preload too many assets. So you, if you have many fonts, you should not preload all the fonts. So that's why we only have these two. Let's, let's run with the preload. Hmm, that sort of felt like the previous one. So if we go back to this one, the cell phones without the preload. Mm, that fell slower. Let's just try that again. To me, it feels the same. So this self-hosted one without preload just feels sort of the, as fast as this self-hosted with preload. 225, 530. So everything loads the same speed here, basically. And uh, the first font here starts at 228 seconds. And for the when we're preloading, the first font starts at 228 seconds. So it's basically no difference here. And I think this is due to the fact that in this example, whoops, that in this example, this doesn't do that much because this is not that much code that is being run before this is actually being used already here. So it has a strategy here to use the font loading API. So basically that is doing what the web font loader is doing, but we manage it, we manage it ourselves on our own site. So let's just do that. So I'm following the font loading thing here. And he has a demo. So you saw that. Let's just look at it in a browser. Slow 3G, disable cache, refresh. Invisible, unstyled, and then it populated. Hmm. He loads several fonts here. Invisible, I don't like the invisible part. Unstyled. I wonder if this is the intent of this example, to have it invisible. 
Let's just try it and see what's going on. What is he doing? Let's see here. What's going on here? So he has the styles. They are the same as before. And then he has a script here. So what I did here is I modified his code. Uh, he has the optimization for repeat views. That doesn't care. We're clearing the cache all the time. So it doesn't matter in this case. But that's basically that we, uh, we store in session storage if we have already loaded the fonts. So we don't have to load them again. This is a clever, clever, clever hack. And then he's loading the font face observer thing. That's just a bunch of code. I just took it, pasted it. And then here comes the fonts. So we have our IBM Plex Sans, the ordinary font, as a new font face observer. But then we add another font with a different weight. And just to be sure, I don't know if this is the way you should do it, but I just made this as its own font, which is, I call it bold. And then I add the weight attribute. So basically I went up here. And here where the font face is for bold, I just added the name bold to treat it as its different font, as a different font. And it downloads the third font, which is the serif font. And then it loads all the fonts. And when the promise has waited for all the fonts, then add the fonts loaded class. And if you use this, if it's reloading, uh, add this reloading thing to not reload it. So that's basically it. I modified Zach's example from here to just use our fonts instead. And I have code to this in a link in the des description. You can go check it out. How does it run? Let's run it with our own font loader. Invisible, unstyled, styled. Is it faster though? Start at 2.39. Oh, sorry. Start at 2.41. Not that much difference. But here, because we have this lorem ipsum down here, we can actually modify this. So let's do it like this, that the, the font C, which is the serif. Let's just, don't care about that promise. Just once these first promises are loaded, change the two fonts loaded, and then start fetching that final font. I don't care about that font. Put it there. So this started at 2.39, and the Latin started at... 242. So perhaps we're saving something. 239, 242. Let's just refresh here. So it sort of got a bit delayed there. Or did it? No, not really. <laughs> okay, that didn't do anything. I'm pretty sure Chrome figures these things out. And it's a very, very basic page. Uh, let's just try to preload these as well and see if there's some difference. So I added the preload here and then we have the different font faces and we have the font face observer thing from Zach. It has there and then we load the C font, the serif font at the end. Let's see how that runs. So the first font starts at about 243. So this is not no big difference at all. And what does it look like? Invisible, unstyled, styled. Not that much change. I don't get why this is it is invisible first. We tried to do that. It didn't work. Make font file smaller. Yeah, we woofed to it. Reduce movement during page load. This is actually pretty neat. 
So you see that things jump around when we re reload here. Reload. Tick tick. Jumps around. One way I would do if I had a different side is perhaps like force some heights. Perhaps the header has to be in a in like a big block that is just set, and that the e and that the uh, this first text perhaps should be in just this one block to sort of force things to not jump around at least on the first top of the page where things jumping around because I like I sort of like this approach but things pop around there when it changes to the style text so I would try to make the unstyled version more similar to the styled one perhaps Okay, we don't know which is, which is the sans serif default font, but I would just develop it for myself and see what it looked like. Okay, we did all these things. Let's just see again, but with load times. And when I say load time, I don't mean the audit time here. I don't mean running the audit and see what the load time is because I think this is fake news. This doesn't work. First meaningful paint, 1.29 seconds, doesn't... Ah, it's not correct. I don't... I don't trust that. I ran the load and then I just compare everything and put them next to each other. As you see, we have the original at the top and then from the left, web font loader, synchronous, web font loader, asynchronous, self-hosted fonts, self-hosted fonts with preloading, self-hosted fonts... Self-hosted with its own preload the font loader and then self-hosted own font loader with preloading. And of course, again, this example is just on my local machine. It will probably not work very well. I will include this file so you can download it and try, try it yourself and see what happens. Uh, but now let's just run it and see so i run it i just i run it from when i click the link it loads it clears the cache and as soon as i get everything done with concerning the fonts there it's done but for in some cases cases the image loads a bit longer away don't care about that i only care about the fonts so here it loads the there it loads the image and then Font's done. But in this case, whoops, at the self-hosted fonts, fonts done, image not done, now image done. And then I care about when the fonts are done. Okay? Let's see this. Side by side, together with the original. Ready, set, go. Boom! Whoa, 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 whoa. Web font loader, mm, not good. But both the self-hosted fonts and the self-hosted own font loader did better than the original. But you see, let's just run this again. The web font loader asynchronous loads the unstyled text very fast which i like but then it just starts redrawing and everything so it's still a bad experience let's just run it again just stop there so at five to six seconds Hosting the fonts by themselves, that is the way to go, okay? Got it. Host fonts yourself. And if you watch Zach's talk, he talks about hosting fonts on multiple subdomains, like your own CDNs and stuff. 
how that is sort of quicker because the browser sort of fetches cross thing. I have to d dive deeper into that. I don't know that right now. But here, the self-hosted fonts and the self-hosted fonts with preloading. The preloading actually added. So this is not, this is seconds and then how many frames. And there are, I guess, 25 frames per second or something. No, this is 30 frames per second in this case. So I think what's happening here is that with the preloading, it's actually not doing much. It's just that these extra frames, that's for the self-hosted fonts, it's one extra frame. And for the own font loader, it's two extra frames. I just think that's the extra kilobytes added by the, the extra kilobytes added by the document being longer. So it doesn't have any effect. But I suspect that if we had a huge site that the like HTML documents were longer or and we had a longer CSS file and all that stuff, things would change. If you have experience of this, please write that in the comments. But from this experiment, I would of course see as the king and queen of font loading techniques, I would go for Boom! Self-hosted fonts. Isn't that amazing? Self-hosting the fonts. Let's just review what did we learn. We learned that we should not just use the link rel from Google Web Fonts. Google Web Fonts is great for drawing up, but do not just go with this technique and that part. In this case, we don't need the preloading, but I would still recommend the preload. I think it has to be better. But be careful with what you preload. Perhaps it's not better with the preload because you can't preload too many assets. So perhaps just skip the preload and just go with the self-hosting. So the self-hosting is just download the, download the thing, download uh, the things, web fonts, some sort of converter and get the woof files, host them yourself, and just host them. And then do everything the way you normally do. And because for this simple example, uh, I tried to over engineer and it just added extra stuff. And just add, so for the own font preload thingy, this just adds many, it adds a lot of kilobytes to everything. And when you're on a slow connection, this really matters. So we're doing the slow 3G which is like poor cellular reception. But when you're like on a Wi-Fi, this doesn't really matter. But we can't trust people being on Wi-Fi. So that was it for this. Be sure and check out .tech domains. Thank you for sponsoring the show. You've been watching this weekly web development show called Dev Tips. Uh, they come out Friday mornings at 0800 GMT. I'm David, MPJ is still out traveling. He's in the US right now. Uh, thank you for watching, write in comments what you think, hit like, subscribe, share, do all that crazy stuff. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye!